is your favorite superhero? Batman. Batman. Since I was a kid, is my favorite superhero. Just, you just whoever your superhero is, just I want you to put that into your spirit this morning. Like put that into your mind. Like my son, Spider Man. I'm Batman. I know some people like Iron Man. You you name it. But I heard a quote not long ago, and it really shifted my mindset. It challenged me to think on it deeper. When you compare superheroes to villains, superheroes to villains, I'm like, okay, they can't be similar. Like, what, what are we talking about? And this quote said, superheroes and villains are pretty much identical with the exception of one thing, how they responded to the pain in their life. It suggested that superheroes... Batman and villains, Joker, are the same. What separates them is how they responded to pain. I said, come on, man. It's not, not, not true. And you think about it. If you really think about it for a moment, a superhero, something happened in his or her life, something painful. Maybe they were stripped from their family. Maybe you were bit by a spider, but the entire time in high school was bullied. And, and then, you know, maybe your parents died or whatever that looked like. A superhero had immense pain and struggle. But then at the same time, so did the villain. Maybe issues at home. Maybe they were exposed to some things. Maybe they were removed from their planet. They experienced pain too. But the superhero decided that it would be his or her responsibility to shield as many people as possible from experiencing a similar type of pain. They took ownership. They said, I want to keep people from experiencing the pain that I felt. But then the villain says, life's not fair. I want to see to it that as many people as possible have to feel the pain that I felt. Do you hear me? Both superhero and villain were exposed to pain, experienced pain, but their responses to it were two completely different ways. One said, I don't want people to experience this pain. The other said, I want as many people as possible to experience this. Come on. I'm getting somewhere here. Don't, 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 don't log off yet. I'm asking you, how are you responding to pain? Like, how are you responding to the pain you've experienced in your life? There is this neuroscientific concept called post-traumatic growth. Post-traumatic growth, not post-traumatic stress, but post-traumatic growth. It says that some people will experience pain and on the other side of crippling pain, on the other side of experiencing the lowest of lows, on the other side of going through the struggle, the storms, on the other side of that, they experience growth. They're calling it post-traumatic growth because they've done something interesting here. They have actually given their pain a narrative. They've not just let it define them. They've let it refine them. Not define them, but refine them. And they will say things about their pain like, man, I'm, I'm so glad that that happened for me, not to me. Do you hear what I'm saying? They will say, I'm so glad that I walked through that season and it sucked when I walked through it. But man, my spiritual muscle is so much stronger now. My resilience is so much stronger now. My grit is so much stronger now. Or, man, I have heightened levels of empathy and compassion Having walked through that, I'm actually better because I was bruised. I'm better because I was beaten. I'm better because I went through something that would have killed somebody. And on this side, I recognize I'm a better person. You see, they've given their pain a narrative. And so many people will walk through difficulty. And unfortunately, somehow, somewhere in your mind, you allow yourself to become a victim. You allow yourself to be, to be defined by what you went through. And now you're bitter. And now you're resentful. And now you don't want to serve people. And now you don't want to love people because you experienced something. And I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying you're wrong. Because it sucks walking through some things. We've all done. I've lost people in my life. Like, I ended up in some situations and circumstances that I didn't think that I would be. And I've been there. But it's all about how you define it. Do you remember? Superheroes and villains experience pain. What are you going to do with it? God created you for a reason. In his eyes, you're like a superhero. Like there's nothing that you can't do, but you have to learn how to give your pain a new narrative. And something I did in my life is I, and I love saying this. I say, man, my current situation 
It's not my final destination. That's what I'm saying. So no matter where I find myself, like it could be in the valley. It could be in the struggles. It could be in the slums. And I say my current situation is not my final destination. Right now, life is happening for me, not to me. Because I recognize that I'm about to be able to extract all the lessons out of this season. All of the struggles actually creating my strength. Oh, I'm better because I walked through that. And now I'm able to leverage it, repackage it, repurpose it, and present it to you as inspiration. And you have the power to do the same thing. You have the power to be the hero in your story and not be made to be the victim or the villain. Like I said, Batman, Bruce Wayne, and Joker both experienced pain, but they responded to it completely different. So my question on this Monday is how are you going to respond to the pain? Are you going to allow yourself to become the hero or the villain? That's completely up to you.